With COP26 dominating the headlines, we are being encouraged more than ever to think about our impact on the environment and get on our bikes. But how much do we consider the safety of cycling? Well, in 2016, our next guest, Matt Briggs, sadly lost his wife, Kim, after she was hit crossing the road and killed by cyclist Charlie Alliston. Cleared of manslaughter, Alliston was sentenced to just 18 months after being found guilty of a crime that falls under a law that was passed in 1861. Well, since his wife's death, Matt has been campaigning for a change in the law, calling for tougher penalties for cyclists who kill or injure pedestrians. And Matt joins us now. Welcome Hi, to you. Thank you morning. for being here today. Thank you for um, me. Sorry uh, the circumstances that you find yourself you. sat here on our sofa. And I think it's really important before we even start telling the story of what happened to know the person behind this and the woman. Huh. that she was and she sounds like a remarkable lady you were together for 19 years we, we married were, for 19 we were married for 19 yeah. years we, we were together for i would say 27 mm. uh if you include the year it took me to convince her to go out with me <laughs> um so uh we'd known each other yeah for 27 years yeah um she was fiercely protective of her family absolutely devoted to our kids yeah. um f funny really funny um, strong, optimistic and, and, and happy. Yeah. You've got two kids, you've got Isaac, who's now 18, and Emily, yeah. who's 16. Um, what happened on that day in February 2016? Um, so I was, I was in, uh, over in central London and I got a call to say that um, Kim had been involved in a, uh, a road collision at the time. And um, amazingly, um, you know, credit to the NHS, Kim was in surgery half an hour after being oh, wow. hit. Um, we received the news that evening that Kim would uh, unlikely to survive, um, and she passed away uh, a week later. On, so, what do we know about the, the, the circumstances of the the collision? So, the the as I found out a week later, um, the the collision involved a, a track bike, a bike that wasn't legal for road use, hence it being a, 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 a deemed to be a criminal um, offence. But the extraordinary thing was, I was. It was a week after Kim died, and I was I was sat out, I was sat at Blue Water. I think I'd been buying, having to buy a school mm -hmm. uniform and things for the kids, and um, I got a call from the police to say that they thought that this was more than an accident, um, <clears throat> that there may have been criminality involved. But then the most extraordinary thing that that I didn't realise and people won't realise is that he said, "But we've got nothing to charge him with. There are no laws that apply to cyclists." And the police officer, who was just the most extraordinary man, said, look, this is going to be a roller coaster. And it took 18 months to come to was trial. Was she crossing the road? She was. She was crossing the road on her lunch break at, um, in Old Street. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry. Well, this... Um... So, the, 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 like you just said, there are no current laws specifically relating to cycling offences where the person is injured or mm -hmm. killed, but instead people are tried under this wanton and furious yeah. driving. And this was something that was put in place 150 years ago yeah. in 1861. It's for a horse-drawn carriage or a bicycle, non-motorised vehicles, yeah. essentially. So, for somebody that has just had, their you know, the bottom fall out of their world, yeah. there's not any protection I, in place. No, and I, I think people will be as surprised as I was. You know, you're, 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 dealing with, you're dealing with your grief, you're dealing with your children's grief, and then suddenly you're on this roller coaster. Um, and yes, so they, 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 what happens is they sort of cobble together charges with this 1860 Act designed for people riding horses recklessly, as you say, and manslaughter, which is imperfect. So the Road Traffic Act does not apply to cyclists. Mm. And as a result of which, many incidents, because what happened to Kim is rare, although I'm in touch with five families over the last few years to whom this exactly the thing has happened to. Mm, mm. Um, although what happened to Kim is rare, a number of people are injured and the police don't investigate a lot of this because there, are, there is no coherent framework mm. of laws. And all I'm calling for and have been calling for is that cycling gets incorporated into the Road Traffic Act so that there's causing death and serious injury by dangerous or reckless cycling. Yeah. It's, it's very, very simple. It does well, seem um, simple. Under the Road Traffic Act, which you mentioned, people can be prosecuted for death by careless driving, carries a maximum prison sentence of five years. Death by dangerous driving carries a maximum prison sentence of 14 years. Yeah. You've been in touch with a number of MPs. Yeah. What's the reaction been? Because one of them, one of the reactions, the words that were spoken when we read them today were really quite shocking. Yeah, I, we, we, there was a there was a trial, and I I, I was, <laughs> I was I was sort of taken aback by the media 
interest in, in the trial, but I realise that I've got a platform now and um, to try and get this law changed through. And we made enormous progress to start with, um, with the transport minister. Um, and I'm on my third transport minister now. We, they commissioned a legal report which came back and said, yes, there's a gap in the law and it doesn't, it's not just Kim Briggs, this has happened to other people. Um, a right around of government departments was done. There was enormous progress. Mm. And then there was Brexit and there was COVID and that's understandable, these things take a back seat. But the public consultation was done, but we've been in a holding pattern for about 18 months now when nothing is happening. But a minister, a minister who you've chosen not to name, yeah. um, a minister said, maybe we need to wait for another death. Yes, yes. Um, I, won't, I won't name him. I don't think it was meant in a callous way. And it didn't... Sounds pretty callous. It, I, think it, I think what it underlines is the brutality of the process, the, the harshness of the process. But the thing is, we, we've had that other death. Tragically, yeah. that death occurred last year and the trial has been concluded. It, it resulted in exactly the same charges, exactly the same confusion and lengthy, time-consuming process. Um, so I've, I've literally, we've waited for everything that's been asked of us to wait, and yet still something or somebody is blocking this now. The, um, and, I, and I wonder whether you sort of look at what's happening in COP26 and everybody wanting us to be more mm. greener and find alternative methods of transport, yep. you know, and we can understand that, we're on board yep. with that. However, there has to be safety in place for everybody, for the yep. cyclists, for other road users, for pedestrians. And this isn't just going as far as, you know, your extreme circumstance where, sadly, your wife lost her life, but this is serious injury also yes. caused by cyclists. Yes. I mean, um, th what happened to Kim is thankfully very, very rare, but people get injured. I think two or three people um, a day reported yeah. injuries. Now, that not all criminality. You know, I cycle. I cycle a lot in London. I think it's fantastic that we cycle um, a lot. It's, it's to be encouraged, but there is a there is a natural then increase in risk. And it just seems to me that in an ordered, civilised society, we need laws to cope with all outcomes. And well, you're this not, so you're not anti-cyclist. No. Mm -mm. So of course. So, no, so you're a cyclist all. yourself. I'm a cyclist. Um, do you think that because, as Holly said, this encouragement at the top level for us to get on our bikes and be more environmentally mm -hmm. friendly, healthy, uh, it, they're concerned, uh, legislators will be concerned about changing the law in case it puts people off? I, I don't know what's blocking this. One, the, the, the cycling sort of lobby groups and the cycling czars, one of the things that was put to me at the beginning of this was that this is not the priority. Mm. We need money spent on infrastructure and things like that. Well, roll forward four years, billions is now being spent on cycling infrastructure. Brilliant. Um, more and more people are being encouraged to cycle. We have low traffic neighbourhoods and all of that. So what are we waiting for now? It, it just seems that... The, you know, the media support this, the victims support this, victims' families, uh, the judiciary, the police. Mm -hmm. You know, in Kim's case, the defence barrister, the defence QC, highly, really unheard of, went on to the media the following day after the trial to say he supports this law change. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is no logical reason but also the fact not that, this uh, that, that those laws exist if you're driving a car and that hasn't put people off no, driving. Exactly. No, I mean, that was one of the things that was put to me. Yeah, this, this could put people off driving. And I just, I thought, well, then the, the, the concomitant logic then is that the Road Traffic Act introduction in the 1980s would have put people off driving. Which you know, that's just nonsense. Didn't. Well, the, um, um, the Department of Transport said any death on the roads is a tragedy and though we have some of the safest roads in the world, the government is committed to making them even safer. We have launched a review exploring the case for specific dangerous cycling offences and will soon publish our response. In addition, the Prime Minister's ambitious cycling and walking plan will deliver more continuous and direct cycling routes in towns and cities physically separated from pedestrians mm. and motor traffic. And, and, well, and that's we'll been the response that I've been getting now for nearly 18 months, yeah. right. word for word. Something or somebody is, is now blocking this. And my concern is that the consultation process or the process has somehow been hobbled. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm, I'm here and just knocking quite a lot harder at Let's the door Let's push now. this forward. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank in. you. How are the kids? Okay. Kids are kids are amazing. Um, my daughter Emily is uh, doing her mocks, um, and my son is working in the event industry overseas. And wow. they are, you know, these things. I think these things can actually make make people more resilient mm. because of what happened and not in spite of. And they um, they're the reason I get up 
every single day. I don't know how I don't know how good I am at it, but I. Uh, well, it sounds like you're doing a very good job. I try job. my best. She'd be very proud of yeah. you. Guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank, Thank you very much.